Hello everyone, welcome to another video. If you have never used this tool in After Effects, you're missing out. In today's tutorial, I'll be using the Puppet Position tool to create something like this. So it's great to see you back here again. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure to hit that subscribe button for future content similar to today's video. And if you're already subscribed, thank you again so much for coming back. Your support is always appreciated. So let's jump straight right into this. After you open up After Effects, you'll create a new composition. Name your composition. And for this one, I have selected 4K at 23.976 frames per second. And you'll click OK. I have also gone ahead and downloaded PNG versions of these two assets I'll be using. You can also go ahead and shoot your own footage or photos, but for simplicity's sake for this tutorial, I'll be just using these two images. So let's bring down the can into our composition and make it a little bit bigger. First thing you wanna do is adjust the anchor point. So let's select the anchor point tool or press Y and let's drag that anchor all the way to the bottom of the can. And then press R on your keyboard to activate rotation. And this is how we're going to be introducing a little bit of a shake in the can. What we wanna do is make that impression that the can is shaking and that there's a blueberry around trying to get out of the can. So let's select about plus three, turn on the keyframe. Let's go back here actually and set that to zero. Let's zoom in a little bit. In a couple of frames, we can go to say minus one. And this is random. You can randomize it as much as you like and just play it back to see if it looks good for you. One last thing to do is to select all of these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, and just select easy ease. And that's going to smoothen out your keyframes. Now this is where the exciting stuff happens. We'll go ahead and click on the Puppet Position Pin Tool, or Command P. It's right here at the top. And we'll add a few puppet pin positions. Make sure that your playhead is at the beginning of your footage. Let's add one here. Let's add one here, one here, one here. Repeat the same process on the other side of the can. Let's twirl down the effects. So you can see that the puppet pin effect has been added to the effects of that footage. Let's click down on the form under mesh one and you can see that there are all of our puppet pins have now been added. So let's move on a little bit further in the frame, maybe to about, let's see, about four or five frames in, we're going to be playing around with these pins. So we'll do something like this like so. And another five frames later, this is going to be going to this side. Go a little bit forward and now we're going to be having that blueberry go from the bottom of the can to the top of the can. So from here, we'll go and make this. Bigger, like so. And another and go forward again and let's adjust that right there. Take a look and see what this looks like so far. It definitely could be smoothing out a little bit more, but we'll just keep it at that for this tutorial. One more thing I wanna do again is smoothing out all of those keyframes. So instead of going one by one here and opening up each of these puppet pins, I'll select all of them, press U on my keyboard, and now I can select all of these keyframes for all the puppet pins and right click and add an easy ease. Now we're going to be adding in our blueberry. Another thing we have to do first is name 
our layers so it's easier. So let's move the can down a little bit more actually, right there. So our blueberries is going to start to come out about this point. So about this point, that blueberry is gonna show up. So this twirl down position, you can press P after you have the blueberry layer selected, add a keyframe, and let's drag that blueberry up right there. We'll drag it all the way so that this appears in the frame. And you can see that there's this trajectory line that gets added. We're going to drag that point a little bit to add a little bit of a curve to that trajectory. It's too curved out, so we're going to adjust the starting position a little bit more to the left. And that's a little bit too fast, so let's drag that keyframe a little bit more. One thing we can do now is click on the keyframes and smooth and smoothen them out. That's so hard to say. Right click on the first one, ECEs out. And on the second one, we're going to click ECEs in. Now let's adjust that scale of that blueberry to be just a little bit smaller. As soon as the blueberry leaves the frame, we're going to be cutting these clips. So first let's pre-compose these two. So like both, click on pre-compose. Let's name it can and blueberry. And at this point, we're going to split the clip. So command shift D and let's get rid of everything after the playhead. So we have that part right there. Actually to extend that a little bit more. What we're going to do now is add that same blueberry again into the frame and let's make this shorter. At this point, we'll have the blueberry fly in into the frame and have that camera follow that flying blueberry. So let's toggle position, add a keyframe, and we'll have that start off frame. Let's add a rotation as well. So shift, hold shift and press R so that you can toggle the rotation effect open as well. Select the keyframe and let's make that like 44 and see what that looks like and let's go one two three maybe about five frames in and that blueberry it's going to show up right here and it's going to rotate a little bit let's see what that looks like so i want the blueberry to keep rotating even though it ends in that position so i'm just gonna drag this rotation a little bit further and let's also shift scale shift s to increase to add a scale so we'll start about 88 and all about here will be 100. let's smoothen out this as well a little bit let's add a little bit of curve into that throw as well once this is up here for a bit it's going to go back down so i want this to position to just go a little bit further this way and then select another keyframe here and another one here and this is where the blueberry will start to go back down so let's select these three keyframes and add an ECE to these three I have the text right here so I'll bring in the layer real fruit text main comp so as soon as the blueberry shows up the text will start what I'm going to do now is actually move this blueberry layer to be on top of the text. So next we're going to be adding the background layers. So I have this video layer, this background video layer over here. And what I've done is animate the background layer for position and scale. So that as soon as the blueberry goes up into the sky, it zooms in and follows the blueberry and it'll come back and follow that blueberry down. Next step is to get that Canon blueberry layer again. Let's solo it right here, just so that you know what I'm talking about. What we're going to do with this is duplicate it. So hold Command D or Control D to duplicate that layer or that composition. And what we're going to do to this composition is now right click on it, go to time remapping and time reverse layer. So this is just going to be reversing that motion that we had at the beginning and have the blueberry just come back into the can. As soon as the blueberry dis disappears from the frame, we'll bring that can back. So now what we're going to do is duplicate that composition again, and then now bring it up here 
and bring it all the way to the end and select put the play hit at the beginning of that conversation right click on it and go to time remapping and this time just freeze frame and this is going to be freezing that can into its starting position and the last item that i'm going to be adding to this footage is a table something where the can can rest on over here Make sure you time the animation of where that table is going to be leaving the frame as well. All right, so this is pretty much it. This is the bulk of it. Last thing you have to do now is just color match the footage, the two PNG images and the table to match the background a little bit more. Add some sound effects, some sound design and music. And this is it. So that's it for today's tutorial. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And that's it for me today. I'll see you next time.